The story of the United States is a story of democracy. Born from the ashes of colonial rule, the founding fathers of the United States sought to create a government that would be by the people, for the people, and of the people. They had witnessed the tyranny of unchecked power through the British monarchy, and were determined to forge a system that would prevent any single entity from becoming too powerful. This vision was protected in the US Constitution, a document designed to establish a balance of power through a series of checks and balances. Well, as of July 2nd, 2024, that's been thrown in the bin, leaving us with questions of, do you think a president should have such broad power? What are the potential dangers of this ruling? How can we ensure that no one is above the law? Should we just start calling the president your majesty? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I am the king of England, no sir! You are the patient! The constitution is fundamental to American democracy, it ensures that the three parts of government, the executive, the president, the legislative, Congress, and the judiciary, the Supreme Court, all have the ability to limit each other's powers. This was meant to prevent any branch from becoming too powerful and safeguarding democracy. And it wasn't just the experiences of the British monarchy, but it also looking back at Rome and how power corrupts and how emperors seem to turn up more frequently than democracy. So what do these three parts do? Well, Congress has the power to make laws, control the budget, and declare war. The president has the authority to enforce laws, command the military, and conduct foreign policy. The Supreme Court interprets the laws and ensures they are applied fairly. So what happened on July 1st? Well, the Supreme Court made a big decision in the case of Trump versus the United States. This ruling has the potential to change how power is balanced in the government. The case was about former President Donald Trump, who was accused of trying to overturn the results of the 2020 election. I know you're paying. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. He claimed that as president, he should be immune from criminal prosecutions for actions taken while in office. And the Supreme Court, six to three, agreed with Trump. They decided that a former president is entitled to absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for actions taken within his constitutional authority, so within the Constitution. This means that a president cannot be prosecuted for actions they took as part of their official duties. They also said that a president has presumptive immunity for all official acts, which means they are generally protected, but this can be challenged in specific cases. And part of this seems to stem from the idea of Article 2, Section 2, Clause 1, in the United States Clause, which states, The President shall have power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. And from that, they believe that there's some element that the President is allowed to be immune from prosecution, because in theory, he'd self-pardon himself. But we know that isn't what the Founding Fathers wanted, and we'll talk about that later. But this ruling is troubling because it can open the door for potential abuses of power. For example, a president could misuse the FBI to investigate and prosecute political rivals. This was a concern during Trump's presidency when the FBI looked into connections between his campaign and Russian interference in 2016. With a new ruling, a president could use federal law enforcement agencies to target their political enemies, which would be horrific for democracy and the justice system. And there's many more. Another example would be manipulating election outcomes. And again, this is Trump. The president's allies, including his former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, have suggested declaring martial law to force new elections. Bombshell recording of a phone call revealing President Trump pressuring an election official in Georgia to overturn his defeat to Joe Biden. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. This is something far worse than occurred in Watergate. During the 2020 election, Trump claimed without evidence that there was widespread voter fraud. We had an election that was stolen from us. The Supreme Court ruling makes it hard to prosecute such actions if they are framed as part of a president's official duties. The events of January 6th, 2021 show the dangers of unchecked presidential power. On that day, a mob of Trump supporters stormed the US Capitol to stop the certification of the election results. 
Trump was accused of inciting violence by telling his supporters to All of us here today do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats, which is what they're doing, and stolen by the fake news media. That's what they've done and what they're doing. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. This egregious assault on our democracy. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. And finally ordering them to go and release that hate upon the US Anyone Capitol. you want, but I think right here, we're gonna walk down on our to democracy. the Capitol. And after this, we're gonna walk down and I'll be there with you. We're gonna walk down. During that speech, he said the word slaughtered once, killed three times, dead five, destroyed six, and the word fight or fighting 20 times. With the Supreme Court's ruling, a president could avoid being held responsible for inciting violence if they can argue it was part of their official role. And there you have it. It's the ambiguity. It's the grey area. It's the area that is what is an official role? What is an official duty? And it really does seem to come down to the president's own interpretation. <laughs> Unbelievable, and I mentioned the word love, the love, the love in the air, I've never seen anything like it. There is also the risk of a president using executive orders to benefit their own businesses, something else that Trump has done. A day after returning to the White House with his family, the legal problems continue to mount for U.S. President Donald Trump. The 48-page lawsuit lists several countries that have done business at Trump-owned hotels, golf courses, or office towers. But perhaps no property sticks out as much as this one, the Trump International Hotel. Just blocks away from the White House, the lawsuit identifies, among other th three countries, Georgia, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia, all of whom have hosted events or in some ways spent money at this hotel since Trump has become president. Under the new ruling, a president could direct federal contracts and subsidies to their own companies, without facing legal consequences. I mean, no doubt the founding fathers would have been very concerned about this ruling. Thomas Jefferson was one of the main people who helped start the United States. He wrote the Declaration of Independence and was the third president. Jefferson believed in democracy and thought the government should be small and only have the power that it, people gave it. He was worried that too much power in one part of the government, especially the president, could be dangerous, Jefferson said. Experience has shown that even under the best forms of government, those entrusted with power have, in time, and by slow operations, perverted it into tyranny. Alexander Hamilton was another important person in starting the United States. He was the first Secretary of the Treasury and helped write the Federalist Papers, which supported the Constitution. Hamilton believed the government should be strong, but he also knew the President should not have too much power. He wrote, the President of the United States would be liable to be impeached, tried, and upon conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors removed from office, and would afterwards be liable to prosecution and punishment in the ordinary course of law. Essentially, it means Hamilton thought the President should follow the law and could be punished if they broke it, to keep a balance of power in government. Yet six of the Supreme Court justices, in the ruling of Trump v. the United States, have decided to overrule the Founding Fathers. And frankly, some of the rulings are very, very counterintuitive and contradictory. So for example, one of the judges cited the fact that the president needed to be protected from the judiciary. The executive branch must be allowed to function without the constant threat of legal challenges that could impede its ability to execute the duties assigned by the Constitution. Such immunity is necessary to preserve the separation of powers and ensure the effective operation of the executive office. They drew on court cases that weren't directly relevant to what they were talking about and the issues that had taken place with Trump. They drew on President Nixon's cases, Nixon versus Fitzgerald and the United States versus Nixon. But these are civil issues and what was being put on trial were criminal issues. So in conclusion, the Supreme Court's ruling has significant and dangerous implications for the future of American democracy. 
It undermines the systems of checks and balances. It gives power over to the president, even though they say they don't want to interfere with the president. And it's in stark contrast to what I found in the vision of the Founding Fathers. Democracy requires constant vigilance to preserve the liberties and principles upon which it is built. The challenge now is to find ways to restore and protect that balance of power that is essential to a functioning democracy. So let me know your thoughts on this. Has the Supreme Court overstepped its bounds? Am I overthinking it? Have they completely gone against the Founding Fathers? And have they become kingmakers? Let me know your thoughts. Once again, thank you to all of my listeners and supporters. You keep this channel going and growing. Without your help, I don't know if I would be able to continue. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.